All right, joining me now, former acting assistant, treasury secretary, and former Trump deputy solicitor of the Interior Department, Greg Zerzan. Greg, thanks for joining me. So, listen, talk to me about this, because Joe Biden is out there saying, listen, we want to do everything we can, as this report just mentioned, to lower gas prices. But in the same breath, he's saying, but also we have to pivot from oil and gas to green energy. Does that make any sense to you? You spent almost four years in the administration with what you saw. Well, Congressman, thanks for having me on. And, and as you know from your time in Congress, where you were a champion of policies that would ensure American energy independence, energy prices are a result of policies. And the fact of the matter is, Vladimir Putin is not the reason that America will produce 440,000 barrels of oil less today than we did in 2019. That is directly the result of policy choices that this administration made. And I agree with the president's sentiment that, yes, he does want lower prices. The problem is he has a lot of people in his party who seem to be more focused on creating some sort of new green ideal rather than making the choices that need to be made if we were serious about lowering prices. So what, pol what, what policy changes were made, uh, Greg, with regard to the Trump administration now with the Obama, I'm sorry, Obama, with the Biden administration that have driven prices up? Yeah, so, you know, uh, there is a roadmap, right? That roadmap was actually called the American Energy Independence Executive Order, which President Trump signed in his first few months in office and which President Biden repealed his first day in office. Uh, what that policy said was we are going to pursue an energy policy that first and foremost says produce energy here in America. Oil, gas, nuclear, wind, solar, didn't matter. Just get us free of foreign sources of energy. Unfortunately, we've gone in the exact opposite direction. And one of the things that, you know, sometimes goes unmentioned or unnoticed is a lot of the environmental law reforms that we made in the prior administration, which weren't designed to damage the environment. They were designed to stop lawyers from being able to make careers on suing under laws that actually did nothing for the environment. A lot of those changes have been overdone or undone by the current administration. So just for one example, uh, we produce more oil and natural gas in America than anywhere else in the world. We are abundant in those important resources. Um, the Environmental Protection Agency, just earlier this month, uh, proposed repealing a Trump administration policy, which said when the federal government says you can build, go ahead and build. The Biden administration is proposing to reverse that and let states and tribes effectively veto energy projects. And what that means is if you want to take gas from Appalachia, which is one of the biggest gas producing areas in the world, and you want to ship it to the coast or to the southeast, um, you have to go through a bunch of states. Uh, if just one of those states objects, that pipeline is done. And there's no one is going to pull that gas out of the ground if we can't ship it. So, Greg, you're, you're a father. I'm a father. I think, you know, parents across America, Americans across the country say, listen, I can't afford food at the grocery store, but I can't afford to put uh, gas in my car. And so if, if, if Joe Biden is successful, Democrats are successful in making the transition to green energy, I think what really Americans care about, is it going to be cheaper? Is it going to be less expensive for me to get from point A to point B on green energy than it is to, uh, on, on oil and gas? And what's your answer to that? Will it be cheaper? Well, so here's the thing, Congressman. Green energy is great. I think most people agree we need to shift to less carbon-intensive forms of energy. But you can't do that if you make energy more expensive in the short term. If you drive up the cost of energy, which is the basic input for everything, you also drive up the cost of innovation. So unfortunately, these policies actually run counter. The goal of any transition should be lower energy prices. That should be the first and foremost goal. It shouldn't be trying to meet some sort of government mandated top down approach. It should be an approach that allows American entrepreneurs to do what they do best, which is invent technologies that move us away from fossil fuel intensive sources of energy. But don't we want to be energy independent? And we have, as you, as you mentioned, we have I mean, a, a, a ton of uh, oil and gas in America. We can, we can um, produce our own energy if we use oil and gas. But if we go to green, it doesn't seem like we're making windmills and solar panels and batteries in America. And we're not actually mining the critical minerals that go into those uh, technologies. That's coming from overseas. Right, right. And, you know, just one example. Um, nuclear energy is a fossil fuel-free, greenhouse gas-free 
source of energy. The administration has actually recognized that and says they're going to come up with a nuclear fuel plan, and I hope they do. Um, but the problem is right now we have zero domestic energy pipeline. 100% of our uranium comes from overseas, and 60% of it comes through the port of St. Petersburg in Russia. So if we really wanted to move towards American, uh, you know, greenhouse-free energy production, we need to take steps to make it easier to do things like mine uranium or mine cobalt or lithium or other things that we need for batteries to store green energy. Craig Suzanne, I got to tell you what, really do I look to the Europeans as guidance, but the fact that the EU is looking at building more pipelines, that Germany is looking at reopening their coal-fired power plants, um, says something about, you know, what's happened with regard to energy and how you need to actually stay with carbon right now until you can, to your point, make the transition to green energy. Listen, I appreciate your insight, and uh, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it.